Hello people, welcome back to part 3 of this series. To recap, in the previous videos we made a circle class, created an array of circles, then the draw function we call their move, show and walk like functions to make them move. The biggest issue currently is of course, they just pass through each other. And in this video we're going to code the function that will make the circles collide with each other. But before we start doing the code, we're going to spend a good bit of time on how it actually works in the mathematics because this is 95% math, so the actual coding is quite simple once you know how it works. We're also going to assume they have the same size and same mass for this tutorial because it just makes stuff easier. Before I did this video, I don't actually know the equations of how they move, but I think we can intuitively find out how this works. If you have seen uh, Newton's cradle, where one of those balls hits the other, it stops and the ball on the other side moves. So if you look at this illustration of a one-dimensional ball, we can see that a way of simulating the collisions is when two circles hit each other, the velocity swap. From the wall collision function, you might think that we can reverse the velocities of the objects. But if you look at the situation where one ball is moving, the other is still, you can immediately see that it looks weird for the moving ball to bounce back and the still ball staying still. So if you kind of understood that, we can go and look at the two-dimensional case. Unfortunately, it's not as simple as just swapping the velocities but it's not too hard. In 2D, we can swap the velocities if it's a direct hit. But if you think about a circle that barely touches another one on its sides, we won't expect that all of its energy velocity is swapped and transferred, but they would bounce off each other at some other angle. But the swapping velocities part is still relevant. It's just swapping a part of it, the velocity. So let's look at the moment that the two objects hit. Let's draw an arrow or a vector from one circle to another from which we can get the direction and the distance they are apart from each other. If you draw another vector perpendicular to it, we can see that it creates something like a rotated axis. And the reason this is important is because the velocities of the objects are stored in the x and y axis. But we kind of have to convert the vectors to this rotated axis because this is a way we can get the amount it is going towards the direction of the collision and swap only that part. It turns out we only need one of the axes and that's exactly what the dot product allows us to do. The dot product allows you to project a vector onto another one and get the length of the vector after you project it. So now we got the part of the velocity we need to swap, but how do we actually swap it? It seems difficult since this is in a weird axis, but I found that a way to swap two numbers is to add one by the difference of the two numbers and subtract the other by the difference. So for example, if you have the number 5 and the number 10, the difference will be 5. And if you add 5 to and 5, you get 10. And if you subtract 10 by 5, you have 5. So the so 5 became a 10 and the 10 became a 5. So yep, you swap the numbers and we can do the same thing with vectors. Okay, so that's all we need to do. Let's start doing the code. First, we write a function for colliding the objects. Let's define some variables. A variable called dir, this, v1, and v2. I'll explain what they do in a second. Uh, and we'll write a loop that loops through all of the circles. Now, this might seem kind of inefficient because you have to loop through all of them for every single ball, but we'll, do, we'll just do that for now, and I'll show you how to optimize it next video. Now DRR is a vector that points from one circle to another, and we can get that vector by subtracting their positions. Then we can set the this variable to DRR.mag, which is the magnitude or the length of the vector. We can then use a simple if, term, if statement to see if the this variable is less than the size or the diameter of the circle, which will mean that they were colliding. Now we're going to normalize DRR, which means to set its length to 1. And then before doing anything, we're going to make a variable called correction, which is size minus this. We need this because the program isn't continuous, but it has multiple frames, so it's jumping a little by little. So by the time it's colliding, it might have overlapped slightly. Then we have to subtract that by the current boss position and add that to another boss position. And then like divide it by two because both of them are sub like added by two both of them. So this way we can just push them a bit out a bit. And now we're going to use the v1 and v2 variables, which is the dot product of DRR and the two variables' velocities, respectively. And now we can multiply the DRR by the difference of the two. Because I have, as I have said before, adding and subtracting the difference is just the same as swapping them. 
So now we have uh, DIR, which is also pointed in the direction we need to. And so from this, we can just subtract the velocity of the circle and then add the velocity, subtract the velocity of the circle by uh, the DIR. And then we can add the velocity DIR to the other velocity. And now we're basically done. And yeah, it's hard to explain, but just like try to think about it for a bit more and I think you might understand it. And but thanks for watching and see you next time. So for this video I wrote a script and I, I guess it's more organized but it was hard to keep the code I think. But anyways, the previous code that uh, I wrote didn't actually work and that's because I made a little bit of mistakes. First of all, um yeah circles. Uh there's a plenty of spots like here and here I just said circle but there's an S as plural. So that's the first thing that like I messed up. And also here is D I R not D. I also like accidentally typed D for some reason. But yeah, so you had to do that and I think that's fixed now. And also here you had to call boss collide to show like yeah to call the function for it to actually work. And now if you do that you can see that all of them are colliding very nicely with she says it. And I'm also going to just to show you like what happens if you don't do this corrections part. Look. Yeah, it just like gets stuck together and I mean doesn't it, it isn't too bad, but sometimes it just gets stuck.